we're going to start off talking about composition of functions. We've talked about this before. Now we're talking about it some more, but we're applying it generally to all functions. So let's see how this works. Here we have two functions. I'm going to write them larger. We have f of x equals x plus 2, and we have g of x, which equals 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Now, the thing is, as a lead-in to this, You've been evaluating functions for a long time. F of five, for instance, <clears throat> I just picked that number out of the air, it's not important, is gonna be five plus two. What this is a code for, as I certainly hope you know by now, is this is a code for let every X in F equal five. So that X is going to equal five, five plus two is seven. That's called evaluating a function. And now we officially get to the point today where we're going to put one function inside another function, and it's going to be just like evaluating, except we're going to evaluate with another function. OK, and so you're going to notice this way of writing what we're about to do. F circle G. That's an operation sign. Of X. What does that mean? What that means is. X is going to go into G and g of x is going to go into f. And here's what it looks like. First, it's important that you know that the function on the far left acts as a shell for the other, other function. This is a shell, an outer shell. Okay? so that what you get is this. What this means, f circle g of x is f of g of x. And that's a code. That's a code for, now f of x, remember, let's write it up here, f of x equals x plus 2. So f of g of x is going to put g of x in for every x. That's it. Now I have to look and see, well, what is g of x? g of x is 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. 3x squared, let me make this bigger. There, 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. That's what g of x is. And then there's this plus two at the end. That was already there. So this is where the x is. This is g of x, and it has been put in where the x is. So that now we have g of x plus two. Now all we have to do is combine them we will have 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 plus 2. 
well, minus two plus two, negative two plus two, or two minus two is zero. So the answer is going to be three X squared minus five X. And that's what F of G of X is. F circle G of X. So let's look at F of F and X with their operators, okay? Let's look at the different operators. What are meant by operators? Well, there's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation, and now we have composition. And that's a long word. So I guess I can write the others that way. X bo nin chi asian. Exponent, there's an N here. There. Exponentiation, division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. So addition would be F plus G of X. And what that means is F of X plus G of X. So all you do is you add the two functions together and then combine like terms. Subtraction is F minus G of X which is f of x minus g of x. But put g of x in parentheses, or you'll make a sign error. A multiplication is going to be f times g of x. And you can also put a dot in there. Dot means multiply. So f of x times g of x. And division is, I need more room. All right, f over g, how about that? f over g of x, which is f of x divided by g of x. usually written f of x over g of x. And exponentiation would be like f squared. Well, you could even have f squared g squared, couldn't you? f squared of x would be x plus 2. Squared and then you would square it out. And composition now is F circle G. That's just another operation. The hard part to get used to for me when I was a student and still sometimes is the idea that you move backwards. Look what you do. F goes into G and G of X goes into F. You have a kind of a backwards movement going on there. It's kind of strange. 
All right, now operators. I use the word operators. This is what an operator is in math. Plus, minus, um, times, division, exponentiation. I don't even know how to show that, except, I don't know, a raised number exponentiation, and composition is a raised circle like that. And those are the operators. If you go into mathematics and take a, take a class called abstract algebra, <gasps> abstract <clears throat> algebra, yes, you will meet lots of other operators and lots of other results of operations. It's mind boggling but it's interesting if you can get into it. Okay, so we're gonna do some other problems. This is just a general introduction to overall composition of functions as an operation on functions, just another operation on functions. Okay, so Given that, notice that we're also asked about the domain of each. And by each they mean, what is the domain of f of g of x? Well, let's look at it. We found out, let's erase this, so we have room up here. Erase, there, didn't mean to yell. Actually, I did. Okay, uh, that didn't work. There now. All right, f of g of x. Which is f of g of x. We worked that out here and found out that it's 3x squared minus 5x, because the minus 2 and the plus 2, when they combined, gave us a 0. Okay, now look at this. Do you see any denominators with an x? No. You see, that would cause um, uh, the domain to not be negative infinity to positive infinity, because we would have to have a break at x equals zero because the denominator you recall cannot be zero. Okay, well, what else? I don't see that. Do any of these x's have a fraction exponent, like two thirds? Is this x to the two thirds? And what would that mean? Well, that wouldn't be fair because it still wouldn't be a problem for technical reasons. However, let's make it one half. Good old one half. What that means is we would have 3x squared minus 5 times the square root of x. Now, while well, 3x squared has a domain negative infinity to positive infinity, the square root of x has domain Let's see if I can get this moved over at all. I guess not. Has domain um, bracket zero to infinity. So that would force this entire algebraic expression to have domain zero to infinity. That would mess with it big time. But no, there is not a one half there. There is not any fraction exponent there. And along with not having that,
notice, oh, well, let me get rid of that, goodness. Notice that this is a positive two and this is a positive one. Invisible though it is, neither of these is negative. If for instance, that one were negative, we would have three X squared minus five over X. And then you would have the troubles we mentioned before with an X in the denominator. None of that is there. That's what makes this a polynomial. There are no complications. There are no X's in the denominator. There are no fraction exponents. There are no negative exponents. There's just a nice polynomial there. There's nothing about 3X squared minus 5X that would stop the domain. That would stop the domain from being negative infinity to positive infinity, which is what the domain is because this is a polynomial. When you look at a polynomial, you get to take a sigh of relief and realize there are no complications. That is, there are none of the ugly complications. I like polynomials. All right, well, we have to find we're going to stop talking now and just do problems. We have to find this other composition of functions, g circle f of x, which means that x goes into f and f of x goes into g, so that g now will form the shell. So g of x equals let me check it out here. 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Now, g of f or g circle f of x is g of f of x, which means f of x will be put in for every x. Like this. I think composition of functions, at least in the beginning, is so much easier to do if you write the shell function on top and then um, your composition right below it, and look how easy that is. You just put an f of x in wherever you see the x. Oops. Yeah. Now, we have to look and see what f of x is. It's real easy, isn't it? x plus 2. So that means I am going to do this 3 times x plus 2 squared minus 5 times x plus 2 minus 2. So this will be 3 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 minus 5 distributed in here and in here will give me minus 5x minus 10 and then there's the minus 2 on the end. So we will have 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4 minus 5x minus 10 minus 2 is going to be minus 12. Now I will distribute this 3, boom, boom, 
Boom. 3x squared plus 12x plus 12 minus 5x minus 12. Well, look what happens again. You can't count on that always happening, but it happens here. 12 minus 12 is zero. So we're going to have 3x squared plus 12x minus 5x. And that will be 3x squared plus 7x. Now, as for the domain, once again, there are no negative exponents, no fraction exponents, no x's down in a denominator. And so, this is one of those lovely polynomials, and it has the domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Yay! Okay, now that I have talked your ears off, let's do this. We're going to find f of g and g of f with these functions. Okay, so for f circle g of x, which is f of g of x, it's helpful to go ahead and write f of x up here, x squared minus 1, which means f of g of x is going to be g of x squared minus 1. So we're going to have g of x, which is 3x minus 4, we're going to have 3x minus 4 squared so that we have 3x minus 4 times 3x minus 4 minus 1. So we'll have 9x squared minus 12x minus 12x plus 16 minus 1. So that will be 9x squared minus 24x. And then these are both constants, so we can combine these. 16 minus 1 is 15. And that is what f of g of x equals. And the domain, no fraction exponents, no negative exponents, no, de no denominators with x's in them. So my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. In other words, the whole x-axis. And life is wonderful. And this is all real numbers also. So if you were doing set builder notation, you would write this as x such that x is real. x is all real numbers. And if you keep going in math, you'll say this. OK, so don't think I mean, mathematicians hate to write words. One of the reason is what's the easiest way to communicate with a mathematician in China or in Germany or in Finland or in Africa or South America? Well, if you all speak the same math language, you don't have to worry about speaking the same language language because you understand. 
So we have to have a neutral language also. And at the upper levels, you almost never get down to English. Or Spanish or French or German or Chinese or Af one of the African languages. You just don't. The way to world peace, make everybody speak math. That, that might not be the right way. G of F of X. G now is the shell, right? So this is going to be G of F of X. We'll have to see what G is. Let's see what G of X is. It's 3X minus 4, right? Yes. So f of x is going to go into that f, x. Well, f of x is x squared minus 1. Anything is. All right, so G of F of X. Is um, 3X squared minus 7 and the domain. Again, there are no uh, negative exponents, no fraction exponents, no X's and denominators. And let's throw in no square roots, or radicals of any kind. So there is nothing to stop the domain from being negative infinity to positive infinity. So we're happy. Now let's do something easier. This. F of X. is negative 4x minus 1. g of x is x squared minus 5. This time we're not being asked to find f of g of x or g of f of x. We're being asked to find f circle g, the composition of g with f, of negative one. What does that mean? It means just what it says. F of G of negative one. You're going to treat that negative one just like you would an X. This is F of G of negative one. But look at G of negative one. All I have to do is come over here and find out what G of negative one is. Well, negative one squared is positive one. Negative one times negative one is positive one. Minus five that will be negative four. So G of negative one is negative four. So all I have to do is take that negative four and put it in there so that I have F of negative four. Well, f of x is negative 4x minus 1. So that means f of negative 4 is going to be negative 4 times x, which is negative 4 
minus one. Negative four times negative four is positive 16 minus one. You're going to have 15. So f of g of negative one is just 15. Have you ever seen anything so easy? Probably. Now we get to do it again. Look at this. We have f of x equals 2x plus 2. And g of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 5, a quadratic trinomial. And we're being asked to find g circle f of 7, so that this is going to be g of f of 7. So all I have to do is come over here and find f of 7. f of 7 means put a 7 in for every x over here in the f function. 2 times 7 plus 2 is 14 plus 2 is 16. So all I'm really going to be finding is g of 16. So I'll put that in for every x up here in g. That'll be 16 squared minus 4 times 16 minus 5. So let's get a calculator for that one. 16 squared. Now 15 squared is 225. 16 squared is 256. Okay. So we're going to have 256 minus 64 minus 5. Well, 256 minus 64 is 192 minus 5. So, um, 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 that's going to be 187. Let's put it in the calculator and make sure. Um, all right, 16 squared minus 4 times 16 minus 5. So, here we are. 16 squared minus 4 times 16 minus 5. Five is one eighty seven. Okay, so you have more involved kinds of composition and you have easier kinds of composition. And your homework has both, a few of both so that you won't be overwhelmed with work, because this is a very mechanical procedure.